here's an email from Daniel. He says, Dr. Berman, my wife lost her father a little more than a year ago to cancer, and I was listening to your program tonight and heard you say, let yourself feel the pain. And after about 45 seconds, the pain will start to let go. I think a lot of the time my wife swallows her pain so as not to cry in front of me or our small children. Thank you for your advice, and I'll be sure to pass it on to her. Do you have any other advice on how to cope with death and what I can do to support her? Yeah, Daniel, it's super important to let that pain out. And yes, there is a time and a place for it. But I will tell you this. Your children really need to see and understand that everybody has pain, that the pain will not take them over, and that it's okay to express your feelings. So it's very different than kids having like a depressed parent who is constantly in bed and unwilling to play with them or take care of them and is constantly, you know, in a catastrophe or crying. That's not what we're talking about, right? But if an otherwise functional mother who the kids have a good relationship with you know from time to time is like wow I'm feeling really sad about grandpa today I love and miss him so much and she cries for a minute and the kids cuddle her it's teaching them empathy and they see that mom can cry and she's still okay and she can move her feelings and it's okay to talk about our feelings and it's okay to express our feelings and that they're not so scary Right. And my guess is your wife never had that growing up. So she doesn't know. And she has some shame about showing her emotions. And it's really important for your children's sake that that shame is not passed on. So I would maybe encourage your wife to just cry in front of you when you're alone or, you know, if not you, maybe with her kids or with both of you. But it's you know, I remember my youngest son, who was probably four or five at the time when my mom died. Um, you know, I was hiding the crying from him. I was crying all the time, but I didn't want to scare him for the same reason. And he eventually said to me, Mama, how come you never cry for guapa? That's what he called her. And, um, you know, ever since then, whenever I'm sad or upset, I cry if I happen to be with him. You know, it's not like I flip out, but I say I'm feeling really sad. I miss my dad today or whatever. So I think that's important. I also think it's really important, for, especially for someone like your wife, to do some grief work. Um, with with a grief counselor. So try to help her find a grief counselor or a grief group. My guess is a grief group would be a little bit harder for her because she's so private about it. But a grief counselor would be a great place because otherwise, if you don't express the feelings, they kind of you stay stuck. And it's really an important part of moving forward and healing. And finally, have her listen to the podcast I have done with Anita Morjani. So if you go to my podcast, anywhere where you listen to podcasts, it's called Too Risque for Radio. And look up my podcast. I did, I think, more, at least one, pro- probably more than one, with Anita Morjani, who is amazing. And she actually died and came back. And she wrote a whole book, which was one of the most healing things I read after my mom passed away, called Dying to Be Me. And we talk about it on this podcast. And I would even get that book or get the audio book because Anita has a beautiful accent and she reads it. Um, Get the audio book for your wife, Dying to Be Me. It was one of the most instrumental things in my healing from the grief. And um, it's a beautiful podcast, too. So to make make sure to listen to that and have her listen to it. And if you want me to talk some sense into her, you want to call and talk more about it. I'm always here for you. I, unfortunately, am turning into a little bit of a grief expert because Lord knows I've had a lot of it, and I'm still having it. So I know it well and understand it well. 